mother-in-law sabotaged my cooking and humiliated me in front of family until I exposed her with a video. Ever since I have been married to my husband, the hostility I have faced by their family is a little too much. They always try to demean me and sort of separate me into a particular class that should not be messed with. If you do, then you will be making the whole family impure. This brings me to give a good example. Years ago, while researching for my school paper, I came across this proverb which said, if a pure object touches an impure object and both or one of them is wet such that the wetness of one transfers onto the other the pure object also becomes impure. I thought the statement to be irrelevant and devoid of any truth but when you see the practicalities of a flaw, you start to believe that the flaw is a fact and actually exists. From a young age, I have become qualified in taking tough decisions. It was just me and my mother from a very young age, so the connection we share is almost immeasurable against anyone from our distant family. My dad had lung cancer and he passed away at a very young age. I don't think I remember my dad. I just picture him from all the stories my mom tells me about him. I remember one incident very vividly from when I was in school. I used to get bullied a lot by the older kids in school. Mainly because of my lean structure, the senior kids used to pick on me and tell me that I am the one who did not have a father and that he left after he saw my face. Looking back at it now, it brings your blood to your fists but in that situation, what should a person do? I used to come home crying. Whenever my mother used to ask the reason for my tears, I would give some stupid excuses like I fell down or tripped on something. One day, it went through an extreme when a senior girl came to hit me with a stone because I revolted against her and her group and I told her to go to hell as they were the worst persons I had ever seen. The girl threw a rock at me which brazed my forehead but for the first time in my life, I saw blood. I immediately started crying. The school authorities called my mother and she came running, thinking that something had happened to her little girl. I told her about the whole incident and her only response was it would be okay. The next day, when I woke up from my sleep, I found my mother nowhere to be by my side. I went downstairs and the scene which I saw blew my mind away. I saw that the girl and her parents were seated down and son as I entered the hall, they stood up. The girl started apologizing and telling that she committed a grave mistake and that it would not happen again. I told her that it was fine and things like this happen. The only reality is to now ensure that it does not happen again, actually and to keep a note of one's own actions. After they had stepped out of our house to go, during which they were providing a stream of apologies, I got to know from my mother that she threatened them of calling the police on the family as it was the parents' fault, as they are the guiding blocks in the children's life. My mother might be the most badass woman I have ever met. When college days were upon us, I was really homesick leaving my home and the one person I loved in the whole world most. I found comfort in this boy who was really a very good friend to me. Although there were some feelings involved, I did not get mixed into that during the first year as I had come to study and not fall in love. During the final year of my college, it was very evident that feelings have become involved. He proposed to me and I agreed and thus, we dated for around two and a half years. All throughout my relationship, I used to only gossip about him to two of my very closest friends and my mother. So, the moment when I told her that he had asked me for my hand in marriage, she was exhilarated. She was jumping with happiness and tears were flooding through her eyes. I joined her in hugging and singing weird songs due to our outstanding happiness that had engulfed the both of us, although it was me who was getting married. My mother already approved of my boyfriend since the incident that had happened a few months ago. One day, my boyfriend told me that in order to get to know my mother, he should organize dinner for the two pretty ladies that are soon going to be a part of his life. He booked the restaurant, sorted out the menus and did everything all by himself. I did not intervene for one moment. My mother told me beforehand that she was going to put him in a weird space and this is the time I am talking about when he had not yet proposed to me. I told her to cut him some slack but my mother, being the full humorous woman she is, decided to have some fun with him. We reached the restaurant and we were having the food, making some dialogue in between when suddenly my mother turned to him and asked him when he was going to pop me the question. I saw his face get pale. He started to sweat. Although we were taking the fun out of the situation, our face said otherwise. Both of us had a brick face, very serious. To make the normal circumstances even more awkward, I excused myself and went to the toilet leaving just my future husband and his mother-in-law alone at the table. After I came back, my mother had a smile that looked like she was satisfied and his face looked relieved. When we reached home, my mother told me that when I was absent from the table, he showed her the ring with which he was going to propose and that brought her the belief that he was the right choice for me. I had heard that he had problems with his mother. His mother would do anything to humiliate him in front of everyone. She even told him one time that he was unplanned. This has brought a lot of animosity between them. He even warned me to be on my heels at every moment as she had not shown too much enthusiasm at the news of his marriage. With the approaching festive day, I forgot about the warning. 
we married and kissed and the day was just out of a picture. It was perfect. When I reached my husband's home, everyone was so sweet and greeted me with the extreme politeness. It was only my mother-in-law who conversed with me as if someone had kept a gun at her head and had asked her to talk with me. All throughout our conversation, she gave one-word answers and to every reply I was providing her, she kept rolling her eyes. I did not make too much of it as it was my day and I did not want to give her a significant part of my attention as that was reserved only for my husband. A few weeks passed and it was time to call my parents and my family to our new house. It would be a nice get-together of the two families. I took the responsibility of cooking food for the whole household which might have been a little over the top, now I think. From the time I had woken up in the morning, I was feeling a little light-headed but that was beside the point. I had to cook. I started my preparations and was on the verge of completion after a tiring day when I started to feel very light-headed. I called my husband but he was not picking up. He was out as he had some important work to attend to. The only person in the vicinity was my mother-in-law and I did the tremendous mistake of telling her that I had been feeling light-headed. She told me that she would take care of the kitchen and took me to my room and told me to sleep. After 10 minutes of trying to fall asleep, I got up from my bed and went down the kitchen and was amazed at what I saw. I saw my mother-in-law empty the whole container in the soup. I took a video of it and sent it to my husband. He came back in a few minutes and we conspired to show her true colors in front of everyone. Just as we were about to eat, my husband says that we always had a tradition in our family where the eldest member tastes the food and gives the others their feedback. For us, the eldest member was his mother and that he would request her to taste the food. She seemed very enthusiastic and when she took the first spoonful of soup, her facial expression changed. She looked at us in such a way, that it felt that somehow, we had asked her to donate her kidneys. She said that she had not tasted such bad food in years and even gave a dig at my mother and told her that she could have taught me these things. Without wasting any time, I pulled out my mobile phone and showed everyone the infamous video. Upon seeing it, mother-in-law's face became small and everyone just started shouting at her. Although the view of mother-in-law learning a lesson looked good, was I the a-hole for not handling the situation properly and instead motivating a conflicting environment in the family? Update 1 it has been almost three months since our marriage and two months since the incident. Ever since, we have gone to my mother-in-law's place only once. When we visited them, it was a nice experience. It looked like she had learned a lesson but obviously, she was maintaining the same hostility. We did not care as we showed her true face in front of everyone. I have a nine-year-old son with my ex. She cheated on me a lot while we were together. We actually broke up for a short time before getting back together when I found out she believed I might not be our son's biological father. It hurt me that she kept it from me, even after we found out via DNA that I was his biological father, it still hurt, but she apologized a lot and I wanted to try and be a family for our son's sake. Then I found out when she was expecting her second child that she had cheated on me, repeatedly, cheated so much that she actually gave me an STD. I broke up with her for good that time and when her daughter was born I paid for AD and a test which confirmed I was not the father. It was easier because we were not married so I was not put on the birth certificate or anything. Six months later I learned the bio father did not want to be part of his daughter's life. This is when the request started. X asked me to raise her daughter as my own. I said no. She then led her daughter to believe I could be her dad, and last year she asked me several times if I would be her daddy too. X and I fought about it every time. I asked her to put a stop to it. She told me I would just have to face the reality of rejecting a child because she wasn't going to do shit. My son asked me at one point if I was going to be his sister's dad too, since she didn't have one. I took him to a therapist who helped me to explain to him that I was not and in the long term it was better that way, without going into inappropriate explanations and so I had back up in explaining this. My son got it. He said it made sense to him. X has been so much worse lately. She's fallen out with her closest friends and now she's on her own. Her family was never a big part of her life, she comes from dysfunction, and so her daughter has nobody else except her and my son. Her daughter has become more and more upset when she sees me and my son has said she asks to come with him when he comes home to me, his mom and I share custody. X has started getting really angry over text and DM saying I am a shitty person and a shitty dad if I can't love my kid's flesh and blood sibling enough to be there for her. She has also accused me of weaponizing our son because he has been telling her it's not my job to be his sister's dad. I don't really trust what she says ever but I guess I do feel some guilt for not being any part of the kid's life even though I know I would never be able to love her and I have never actually wanted to be in her life. I am kind when I am around her but she reminds me every day of what my ex did and how much I hate my ex for how she treated me and destroyed everything. I am aware of her innocence, the child, but it doesn't take away how I feel. And I know she would never feel loved by me either. Am I the a-hole? I, 
35 female, have an older sister Laura, 38 female. I come from a family of decent looking people, I've always gotten compliments on one feature or another, but I never really put too much effort or thought into my appearance. I've never really suffered heavy insecurity, which wasn't something I really appreciated until recently and I saw how insecure my daughter was. Laura is also very pretty, matured now, but still very good looking. If I was complimented when I was younger, then she was getting love letters, not really, but you get my point. She's always been very keen on how she looks, taking hours before going out even for casual days, refusing to wear cheap clothes, manicured nails, curled hair, always wearing makeup, you get the idea. I recall her having a few crying fits when we were teenagers over not looking good enough. I never let it bother me, it wasn't my business how she decided to present herself or style her clothes. She never really pushed any of it on me, my husband or children, 14 female, or, 9 female, until recently. My 14-year-old, who we'll call Becca, has recently hit puberty, so obviously she's filled out a little bit, acne etc. I didn't think this would ever be brought up, especially not by Laura, but over the past couple of times we've saw her she's said things like you really should wear some pretty makeup to cover those spots or now that you're grown you should get some nice clothes instead of those hoodies you've been wearing or you could be so pretty if you lost some weight and the list goes on, it ranges from just vanity to outright bullying, in my opinion, and the last time I saw her, I told her that I didn't want her around my daughters if she couldn't hold her tongue. To which she replied I'm only trying to help so she can stay youthful like me. I'm not even exaggerating, I don't remember if those were her exact words, but the same meaning. I was so close to laughing if I wasn't so annoyed. I haven't talked to her since, edit, by my own choice anyway. Yesterday I held a small family dinner. My parents, in-laws, nephew, husband's side, and daughters were there. Sticking to what I told Laura before, I didn't invite her. She ended up inviting herself because I guess someone told her, I didn't let her into the house, and told her quite clearly that I didn't invite her because of her vanity. She stormed off, but the rest of dinner was very uncomfortable, with my parents saying that I should have let her in because she's my sister and it's rather vain of me to not invite her for my own whims. That I should apologize because she was only trying to help Becca. I've consulted my husband, and he thinks Laura is full of shit and should apologize if she really wants to be invited to things, but I haven't heard the end of it from my parents, though Laura hasn't messaged me at all. So, am I the a-hole?